Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at taking 10% of a number. Being able to take 10% of a number is really helpful when you're doing things like leaving a tip at a table or um, finding percentages or approximating percentages um, in everyday life. So just knowing a little trick about um, taking 10% is really helpful. So let's just look at if we can see if we can find the pattern of taking 10%. So the first one asks, what is 10% of $50? So remember that percent is just a fraction. So in a, in a um, previous video, we saw that all we do to find a percent of a number is we just simply multiply by that percent. And since 10% can be written as 10 over 100, we're just gonna multiply 10 over 100 times 50. We can simplify a little before we begin to multiply. So for instance, this 10 over 100, divide the top and the bottom by 10, so you get um, 1 tenth is the same as 10 over 100. So multiply that, and remember when you multiply fractions, you just multiply the top times the top, and the bottom times the bottom. So you end up with 50 over 10, which is just equal to five. So 10% of 50 is just equal to $5 there. So if I wanted to leave a, if I had a $50 bill at a restaurant and I wanted to leave a 10% tip, I would just leave simply $5. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna multiply 10% um, of 82 or 10% times 82. Instead of multiplying by the fraction version of this 10%, this time I'm gonna multiply by the decimal version. Remember that it's 10 hundredths, which I could write as just 0 0.10, but that 0 0.10, remember anything, any zero after the last significant number, um, after, de after decimal, we can do away with. So 10% could just be written as 0.1. I'm gonna take that 1 tenth, one tenth or ten hundredths, and I'm gonna multiply it times 82. When we multiply by a decimal, we ignore the decimal to begin with and just multiply. So this is really just one times 82, which gives me 82. After I'm done multiplying, then I check on the decimals. There's one number behind the decimal. So in my answer, I'm gonna have one number behind my decimal. So eight, and two tenths is 10% of that 82. So this is equal to eight and two tenths, 8.2. Let's now take 10% of 600, or six and 31 hundredths, and I'm gonna do the same thing where I just multiply by its decimal form. So six and 31 hundredths times that um, one tenth, Again, ignore the decimals to begin with. You're just multiplying 631 times one, and you get 631. Now I'll pay attention to the decimals. There are one, two, three numbers behind decimals. So in my product, I will have three numbers behind the decimal. One, two, three numbers behind the decimal. So six and 31 hundredths times one tenth is equal to 631 thousandths. So this is equal to 631 thousandths. Notice that in each one of these, what has happened is our decimal has just moved over to the left one spot. So our decimal started behind the zero and in our answer, it's just moved over one spot. Our decimal started behind the two and our decimal just moved over one spot. Our decimal started behind the six and it moved over to the left one spot. It turns out that anytime we're multiplying by 10%, our decimal is just going to move over one spot. So it makes it easy to find 10% of a number. So if you end up with some bill like $23.42, you can just move the decimal over one spot and go, well, that's $2 and 30 some odd cents to find 10%. Uh, then you can use that 10% to help you find 20%. So if you want to leave a tip that's 20% or even 25%, you can use the 10% to help you. 
So for instance, what is 20% of $50? Well, we're just going to take our 10% and double it. So once we have 10% of a number, in this case $5, to find 20%, I just take that and double it. So 5 doubled is just going to be $10. So I'll show you. Uh, using the same multiplication, well, 20% is just 20 over 100 times that 50. We do the same thing where the zeros, um, we can simplify that fraction to two fifths so that we end up with 100 over 10, which is equal to $10. So all we did was take our $5 and double it. So to find 20% of a number, you just take your 10% and double it. What about 5%? Well, what you do is you take your 10% and you split it in half. So in this case, I know that 10% is $5. Half of that is $2.50. Half of $5 is $2.50. So I can just take that 5% is $2.50. It's the 10% split in half. I could do the multiplication. I could say, 50 times 5 over 100 to determine that. Well, this is 250. You could do the, the division first, or you can just multiply straight across and then divide so that you've got 100 divided into two, uh, 250, which does give you out to the hundredths place. The last number is going to be in the hundredths place, so it's $2.50. Now, using that information, I can find 25%. So if I know 10%, because I just moved the decimal over one spot, I double it to make the 10, half it to make the 250, then to find 25%, I can just add the 20% plus the 5%. So I know that this 25% of 50 is just going to be that $10 plus the $2.50 which is going to give me $12.50. So if I wanted to leave a 25% tip, I could just take my 10%, which is easy to figure, double it, half it, and add those pieces together. So using 10% is really helpful um, when you're finding percents or approximating percents uh, in the real world. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.